Uh, with that, we go on to the last module, which is uh, fooling deep convolutional neural networks. So, turns out that using this idea of optimization, where we are able to actually change the image to suit our needs, right? And these needs were one was we wanted to change the image so that it fires for a particular class. The other was deep dream, where we wanted to change the image so that it starts seeing patterns which were otherwise not observed in the image. Then the other was deep art, where we trained the image or we optimized over the image so that we could produce some artistic images. Yeah, these are the different optimization problems that we have seen. But the same idea can actually also be used to fool convolutional neural networks and I have already hinted at this earlier. So, let us see how to do that. So, now suppose we feed an image to a con net and I know this is a bus image, right. But now what I do is, this is a trained convolutional neural network and what I do is, instead of setting the cross entropy loss to maximize bus, I will set up the cross entropy loss to maximize ostrich. And then I will back propagate through the network. I will not mo modify any of these weights or parameters and I will only change the image, right. So, what I am trying to do is, I know that this is a bus image, but now I am setting the objective that it should fire for the ostrich class. So, I am going to back propagate and change this image so that the log, the likelihood of the ostrich class increases. So, you get the setup? It is very straightforward, okay. And turns out that if you do this with very minimal changes to the image, you can actually fool the convolutional neural network, okay. So, this is the change, right. You have the original image. The second image is actually the amount of change you made and the third image is the original image plus this change. Now, to the human eye, there is no distinction here, right. You would all of us would still think this is a bus. In fact, I do not even see that there is a noise in the third bus that you see. Same for some other class, they have taken some bird or something like that and added some noise to it and a temple. And in all of these cases, the network actually predicts that the modified image is an ostrich, right, or some very random class from the original class. So, why is this happening? And before asking that question, let me just finish. And it need not be that you start with an original image and then try to modify it. Actually, you can start with a blank image and do the same experiment where you modify the image minimally so that P of Robin becomes 1 or close to 1. And you will get some very arbitrary noisy looking images which no, which to at least you and me do not look like a cheetah or Robin or armadillo. But the network thinks that these are the classes that these images belong to. Now, this is definitely risky. How many of you appreciate that? Is bad, okay. Now, and the network is not just predicting it, it is predicting it with a very high confidence, right? 99.6 percent confidence. So, why is this happening? Can you even think of a reason for that? No, no, but okay. In that case, I would have been fine if there are 1000 classes, it should have given 1 by 1000 probability to all the classes, right? But this is like worse than random classifier, right? It is saying with 99 percent confidence that this is a ostrich or whatever class that is. So, why is this happening? And the interesting thing is that this in some sense ties back to the universal approximation theory or at least some ideas from that. Can you think of why this is happening? Okay. So, let us try to see a very intuitive explanation for this. Uh, this uh, so, um, so, this explanation is due to Andre Karpati. We need to put the acknowledgments. So this slide does not have any acknowledgments actually. So, remember that images are extremely high dimensional objects, right? They are 227 cross 227, which is a very, very, very high dimensional object, high dimensional space. And no matter how much training data you have, you see only a small sample of this high dimensional space, right? Because it is real numbers 227 cross 227. Just imagine the number of possibilities out there. No matter you have 1 million samples, 10 million samples for training, this is much, much smaller than the actual number of samples which exist in this space. Of these, only a few are images, right? So, now think of all 227 cross 227 matrices that you can make and how many of them are actually going to be natural images. The probability of natural images is very, 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 very small. Most of these are random things, right? They are just matrices which do not make any sense, which actually look like these images that you see here, right? Now, using the training images, we fit some decision boundaries. And this is the decision boundaries that we fit, right? That this is class 1, the rest of the green part is class 2 and so on. And in fact, we are doing these decision boundaries for some thousand classes, okay? While doing so, we actually end up taking decisions for a large number of points that we have not seen. 
we have not seen any points in this space. But I have made a decision for them that all of them belong to the green class. I have not seen any point in this space, but I have ended up taking a decision for them that all of them belong to the red class. Right? So, in particular what I have done is I saw a cheetah class, image from a cheetah class, I saw a few images from the cheetah class and I drew some boundary around it to say that this is the cheetah class. But my boundary also contains images like this because this is a very high dimensional space and in that boundary a lot of points actually fall in and some of these points are these random points which have no relation to cheetah. Right? But I have been so aggressive in fitting to the training data that I have drawn these boundaries which also include a lot of these points and now all I need to do starting with these ran random images is that go somewhere inside this boundary and then I am all set right it will start detecting it as cheetah where the boundaries have been drawn by the classifier. How many of you get this explanation? Okay, good. So, that is the intuitive explanation for why this happens. Okay. Uh, so, this is where we will uh, end the discussion on convolutional neural networks. Mm -hmm.